Okay, so we're going to talk about section 1.1, points, lines, and planes today. A point is something that you should be pretty familiar with from Algebra 1. It's a specific location, a specific um, location in space. You can't measure it. You can't say, oh, this point is five inches long. That's not how it works. So a point is a specific location in um, the universe. So if you have two points, though, then you can create a line. So a line has zero endpoints that extends for forever in two directions. So if I have point A and point B, then I can have a line that ex passes through both, both, both of those points. So this line contains point A and point B. This line contains point A and point B, and I have arrows on it because it's extending for forever in both directions. So the way I can name this line is I can write two points, any two points that this line passes through, and then draw a line on top of it. I have to use arrows to indicate that it's a line. Must use arrows. It doesn't matter what order I write the points. I can call this line AB, or I could call it line BA. It doesn't matter. I could even put point C on it, and I could have called this line AC. As long as I'm choosing two points and not three, so for example, I would not want to do line ACB. That's bad. That's incorrect. I don't want to do that. Sometimes, though, we're going to give lines a label. We usually use a nice cursive, curvy letter to label a line. Um, so like this is L. Notice L is not a point. There's not a point associated with L. It's just kind of floating in space. It's a label. It's not a point. But I can use a label when it's given. If it's given, I can use a label and call that line L. So another thing I don't want to do, I don't want to say something like line AB. I want to use it symbol. I want to write it symbolically with the line on top if I'm going to use the points. Okay, the next thing is a segment. While a line is infinite and extends for forever, a segment is finite. It has a specific length. So I could take a ruler, hold it up to my segment, and measure it. It has a specific length. Versus a line goes on for eternity, so you can't measure a line. So a segment has two endpoints. So here's endpoint D, and here's endpoint E. So this is segment D, E. But you have to use the two endpoints in order to um, designate what the segment is. Next thing is a ray. A ray has one endpoint and it's going to extend for forever in one direction. So let's say I have here's point F, that's my endpoint, and it's going to extend for forever in the direction of G. So F is my endpoint. The key with naming rays is you always put the endpoint as the first letter. So F is going to be our first letter, G is the second letter, and my ray extends in the direction of G. So the thing that stresses people out is like, Miss Briscoe, this ray in the picture goes towards the left, but when you write it symbolically, your ray is pointing to the right. Why are you doing that? Well, we always symbolically write rays going to the right, so that's why it's super important for you to put your endpoint as the first letter because your ray might look something like, it might look like this, or it might be pointing down, or it might be pointing, you know, in all sorts of directions. So you just have to put the end point as the first letter, and then the direction that it goes through and extends through, that's the second letter. So always put the end point first. I don't know the erase. Always put the end point first when you're naming a ray. And then the last thing is a plane. A plane extends for forever in all directions. Um, so think about like the floor on an office building. A plane extends for forever in all directions. Um, the way that we're going to name a plane is we are going to use three non-collinear points. So I could name this plane H-I-J. Or I could have named it plain IJH. I could have named it plain HJI. It doesn't matter what order the letters are in here, but you have to use three non-collinear points. Which we're talking about collinear and non-collinear in just a second. But another way we could name this plane is just like we have a label on our lines, a, a cursive letter. Um, we might sometimes give you a label for a plane. So like there's this cursive VP that's just floating on my plane. It's not attached to a specific point, but if I have a label, I can call this plane P. One thing that we forgot to put on your chart, I am so sorry, is opposite rays. So go ahead and add that somewhere on your paper, somewhere in your notes. 
opposite rays are rays that have the same endpoint. The same endpoint that extend in opposite directions. forever in the direction of A. Well, if I also have this ray over here, I could say that ray BA and ray BC are opposite rays. They share endpoint B. Ray BA extends to the left. Ray BC extends to the right. They both have their endpoint B. They're pointing in opposite directions. They're opposite rays. So the thing with opposite rays is when you stick them together at the endpoint, they extend in opposite directions and create a straight line. So A, B, and C all lie on the same line. So ray B, A, ray B, C, notice they have the same first letter. They have the same endpoint. Opposite rays have the same endpoint that extend in opposite directions. But notice that these two rays, while they do share the same endpoint, are not opposite rays because they don't create a straight line. They don't extend in opposite directions. Okay, collinear. Collinear, we just mentioned it, but collinear means it is points that lie on the same line. So if you look at this line, and I have point A, B, and C, they all lie on that same line. A, B, and C are collinear. I can hit all three points with just one line. But if I stick point D over here, is there any way for me to hit B, A, and D all with one point? No, because I start drawing a line from B to A, and then I have to detour and curve my line in order to hit point D. So A, B, and D are examples of points that are non-collinear. It is impossible to hit all three of those points with just one singular line. Um, coplanar are points that lie on the same plane. Oops, lie on the same plane. So here's my plane and I have points E, F, and G. E, F, and G are non-collinear. I can't hit them all with the same line, but they are coplanar. They all lie on that same plane. E, F, and G are coplanar. But let's say I have a point up here that's floating above my plane. Here's H. E, F, E, F, and H are not all on the same plane. So E, F, and H are examples of non-coplanar points. E, F, and H are not all on the same. E, F, H, and G, sorry, are not all on the same plane. E, F, H, and G, there's no way for me to hit all four of those points with one plane. Okay, postulate is a fancy geometry word for a statement. It's a rule. It's just something that is true. It's something that we know is true. So it's like a fancy math word for a rule. So the first postulate is if we have two points, any two points, I could have picked those two points anywhere in the universe. There's exactly one line through those two points. And only one line. There's a non-different way to draw a line that hits both of those points. Um, so through any two points, there's exactly one line. Through any three non-collinear points, so here are three non-collinear points, they're all going to lie on the same plane. So back to where I was talking about coplanar, I first said E, F, and H were uh, non-coplanar, but that's not true. I can draw a plane that connects E, F, and H, but the, I can't draw a plane, one singular plane that, connect, that holds E, F, H, 
and G. E, F, and G are on a plane. E, F, and H are on the plane, but E, F, G, and H are not all on one plane, so they're non coplanar So it's really important for me to clarify that. Um, but if I have any three non collinear points, they can be contained on one plane. And then postulate three says if two points lie on a plane, so here's two points on a plane, well then we know from postulate one that there's a line that's going to connect those two points. So if those two points are contained on the plane, then would those that wouldn't the line also be contained on that plane? So it's just, just saying if there's two points on a plane, then the line that contains them is also on the plane. Okay, for this next part, look at your two note cards that we um, cut and snip together. Use that sort of to help you visualize what's going on here. So the first thing is if we have two lines that intersect like so, here's two lines. Those two lines intersect at this specific point. So the intersection, so where the two lines meet, that is called a point. When you have two planes that intersect, visualize it with your two note cards, or you could look like something like this. Those two planes intersect at this crevice. This is a line. So the intersection of two planes is a line. It's not lines, plural, one singular line. The intersection of two planes is a line, not a segment. It extends for forever. It's a line. The intersection of two planes is a line. And then the last one is if we have a plane and then a line that goes through it. Here's my line. I hit the plane. This dotted line is to show you that it's um, it's there, but we just can't see it. It's hidden behind that plane. And then here's the line again. The intersection of a line and a plane is a point. The intersection of a line and a plane is a point. Go ahead now. Complete these examples on the formative or on your worksheet and then check them with the answer key on the formative.